Hello all and welcome to this new episode of In Conversations with uh, my today's guest needs no introduction he is a renowned indian film trade analyst and box office analyst mr komal nata and he has conducted interviews for major networks such as cnbc star and ndtv thank you sir for joining us and how are you doing today thank you thank you for having me over yes it, it's a huge honor for us to you know to have you over here and uh, uh, my first question to you is that um, as a renowned uh, film critic and trade analyst now in this stage of your career what drew you to the world of bollywood and made you passionate about it actually it's my father's business we run a trade magazine incidentally it's in its 50th year now uh, we are celebrating our 50th year it was started as a trade magazine weekly trade magazine in the print format we continued it in the print format for 46 years after which we went online so just about 4 or 5 months before the lockdown started we had stopped publication of the magazine in the print format and we had gone online and thank god for that because <laughs> yes. otherwise the magazine would have shut down you can't discontinue a magazine for two a weekly magazine for two years and then hope to restart it but luckily we had gone online by then so since three and a half years almost nearing four years we have been in the digital format and as i said we are celebrating our 50th year it was started in 1973 wow. by my father so by my father so i joined him after i completed my education wow that's that's great and congratulations for completing Thank 50 you. years Thank and uh, that kind of brings me to my next question which is this uh, box office trade analysis is not exactly a, a very you know it's not exactly a term which uh, right now people are very much aware about this because uh, you know people gauge a film's success based on the box office collections and everything but that was not the case few years back also so can you tell us a little bit about what exactly means by box office trade analysis and what it is see you know people often tell me that i am also a critic i'm not at all a critic a critic reviews a film from his point of view yeah. whereas a film trade analyst reviews a film only and only from the public's point of view so you'll never hear me talking about i found this good i found that good i'll say the public will find this good the public will give this the thumbs up the public will not like this it's always from the public's point of view that i talk and the public's opinions translate into box office collections so the box office is exactly the box office window of each and every cinema the total sum that is received at the box office we talk about those figures and when we review a film it's always the revenue expected compared to the cost of the film so yeah. we have to keep abreast of the cost the uh, artist fees the making cost therefore the total budget of the film and that is compared with our projected analysis for the box office so at the box office counters how much money will come in basis that we say that if it has cost x and if the returns will be x plus y we call it a success if it is going to be less than x we call it a failure or a flop or a disaster depending on the amount of yes. loss similarly depending on the amount of gains we term it as a successful film average above average hit super hit blockbuster etc etc yes yes so like uh, because i also was kind of going through many websites which uh, does the box office analysis and everything and right now yeah by the way this program is uh, our iit degree is very much you know it's a data science program so i am sure that those who are also watching are all of them are very much interested in knowing that in daily in your daily job how much of uh, you know data analysis is actually involved and in, in this uh, box office trade analysis kind of thing lots lots i'll tell you um when we started the magazine in 1973 yes. we used to print the box office collections of about 10 or 12 important cities yeah so there used to be about a paragraph of 15 or 20 lines of yeah. collections for a city like uh, bangalore probably a little more than that for a city like ahmedabad probably half a one one and a half columns for a city like bombay and delhi so it used to be completed in two or two and a half pages of an over a4 size magazine yes when we shut down the print format in 2019 october we were printing box office collections which ran into about 42 pages every week wow so we started with two or two and a half pages and we uh, went on up to 42 pages today probably 44 or 45 if we were to bring out a print format magazine it would be 45 pages sometimes 46 and 47 pages so you know a lot of 
exhibitors cinema yeah. wala have realized the advantage of sharing the collections with us plus because of the multiplex chains yeah chains like pvr inox cinepolis yes. carnival and the smaller chains which are not yeah. national chains they send us the weekly collections of every film running in every cinema of theirs all over india so okay we compile all that data and on that basis we say that you know this is a hit or this is a flop or this is an average yes. film yes so uh, like uh, this uh, the straight analysis kind of thing has also been done in the west like for hollywood films so there is a popular website called the numbers which kind of does that so they have apis and everything watch mojo is also there so this uh, verdict of you know I, i've been seeing a lot of posts that this is an all time blockbuster this is a blockbuster is that unique to our indian cinema because i don't see that those terms being used in the west so is this categorization unique to our indian cinema Yes, because we have a lot of fans, and you know, yeah. actors, fans, they like to use this terminology. So Salman's yeah. fans will say he has acted in three times, yeah. uh, th- in three all-time blockbusters and yes. two blockbusters. So I think this is just these are just coinages. Yeah. But basically, it is uh, box office disaster. Yes, flop, average, above average, semi-hit, hit, super hit. blockbuster for us trade people it is generally these eight or nine categories yes and uh, and the data it's it's uh, the, that was also my question that uh, how do you guys get the data because those data are not publicly shared in any platform or everything so is it like for example let's say there is a company x which is a box office trade analysis company so do they kind of partner with these theater chains to you know officially get these data because there has also been the other side the other side of this thing in the news because there are a lot of in fact in twitter only that's the main source where people there are there are many fake trade analysis also by the way but there are many also complaints of you know inflated figures being coming so how do you kind of ensure that the data which is uh, coming from uh, the, your source is you know it's the trusted data and it's the correct data see uh, because of our contacts in the industry we've been around for 50 years yes. so 99% of the times nobody fudges collections when they share them with us <laughs> and in spite of that we have our own checks in places yeah. so we have our contacts in uh, a lot of cinemas with a lot of distributors with a lot of exhibitors and uh, pvr inox cinepolis these chains might share it with the others but we have representatives in about 200 cities of the country who who gather information box office collections and other information from the single screen cinemas this is a largely unorganized sector yes, in yes. the sense there is no consolidation of these single screen cinemas so we also report those collections there used to be a time in the 70s and 80s when distributors and producers used to give us fake collections yeah but where but where our value was noticed was we used to check and counter check them with the cinema walas and change the collections if they were fake collections provided to yes. us so we used to print the authentic collections which is why our magazine got to be known over the years it has got to be known as the bible of the film trade like the bible doesn't lie we yeah. are we we are viewed as absolutely impartial and very very concerned about the authenticity of the figures we publish so you know this uh, things that go on on uh, twitter and social media yeah. that oh these collections may be yes. uh, may not be true and all uh, there is there is some truth because a lot of people just cut paste whatever yeah. the producer has given they cut from exactly. there and they paste it they actually you can't blame them because they have no clue about how the uh, bollywood yes. business works 99% of the other trade journalists i guarantee you they wouldn't know the difference between collections and box office share so what are they talking about yeah so you know that kind of also i was uh, i've been watching your videos as i told for a long time in one of your very older videos you actually kind of explain how the film distribution works in india so you talk about this circuits uh, there's this east india circuit west india circuit so can you for the our audience can you explain it in a simple and a short manner that how exactly a film is distributed these see these days uh, a distributor buys often times buys the all india rights yes. but then there comes along a film like the kerala story Yeah. which is sold to individual distributors like in the good old days so there's one distributor for bombay circuit another distributor for delhi up now bombay circuit comprises bombay city suburbs thane and not the whole of maharashtra part of maharashtra okay the other part of maharashtra i will come to later 
so bombay circuit and it also covers gujarat and saurashtra so that is one circuit the second circuit is delhi up the entire delhi and the whole of up uttarakhand etc the third circuit is east punjab which covers east punjab haryana so punjab yes. haryana uh, jammu and kashmir etc the fourth circuit is the eastern circuit which again is divided into sub circuits so there is west bengal which comprises calcutta and the west bengal state there is uh, bihar and nepal now it would shock many to know that the business of nepal is included in the business of india not overseas oh so nepal is the only foreign country the business of which is included in the india business so there is west bengal there is bihar and nepal there is odisha that is the state of odisha and there is assam which comprises the state of assam so then so we have completed bombay delhi up east punjab and east punjab is known as east punjab is not known as punjab east okay. punjab and bengal west bengal uh, i mean the four sub circuits yes. of the eastern circuit then there is cp cp berar is central province berar which i said now we'll come to that maharashtra later yes. part of maharashtra and part of mp is covered in uh, cp berar then there is ci the other part of madhya pradesh so half the madhya pradesh goes in cp berar the other part goes in ci and rajasthan is the entire state of rajasthan and then there is southern india south circuit but yes. south circuit also comprises four main circuits one is nizam which includes hyderabad and so it's basically hyderabad and yeah. telangana region then there is andhra visakhapatnam etc etc tamil nadu and kerala tamil nadu and kerala and mysore circuit so mysore bangalore uh, you know mangalore etc etc yeah. so these are the circuits besides these india circuits including nepal which is a foreign country yeah. there is another territory which is known as overseas territory so the us uk yes yes you know australia uae yeah. etc etc okay so that was very complicated uh, in fact uh, in in like in the olden days like, let's say for example like shole has released so the producer of shole will be selling it to these individual circuits That's and right. and right now what which we see in news also like let's say for example all india rights so all india rights will be including all of these circuits together oh, so so i'll give you an yeah. example adi purush adi yes. purush is distributed all over india by one distributor anil thadani his company's name is aa films so he has distributed yeah, yeah. in bombay delhi up east punjab bengal i mean eastern circuit cp berar ci rajasthan southern india south yeah. circuits everything is distributed by one he may appoint other distributors yeah, yeah, the local distributors. but 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 he is the all india distributor okay and uh, you know uh, the, like coming to that there are there are there are these overseas rights which are kind of sold but you know uh, in news also there are, you know there, there's this thing that overseas collection do not have much impact in the you know in the film's profit even though let's say for example uh, is it because due to the high taxes or anything like that or no 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 overseas overseas does have an impact on the total earnings uh, a karan johar film or a yash raj yes. film could uh, get revenue to the extent of probably 70 80 crore from overseas alone okay and and if a film is uh, like dangal is released in china yes. you can add another 100 crore to that so yeah. 70 80 plus 100 so it does have a bearing but having said that i'll add that very few films work big time in the overseas circuit so there is sharukh khan there is yes. salman khan there is amir khan not all stars uh, exactly. not the, not the not the films of all the stars work very well in the overseas probably that is why you must have heard this but yes the films of these stars definitely uh, the earnings from overseas circuit has a bearing on the total earnings yes so you know that kind of brings me to my you know question about sharukh khan's film dilwale so in on wikipedia it's written that uh, that film was uh, like that film's collection had crossed the budget like the overall worldwide collection and in many films also it's uh, also reported that you know it's not break even so there is a small profit kind of a thing but overall the producers have lost money so where does the so for example if uh, even if, if my budget is let's say 200 crores and i earn let's say 250 crores it's many times reported that uh, you know the producer has lost money so where exactly is the money lost i'll tell you uh, firstly when you hear that it has collected 250 crore that doesn't come into the producer's pocket okay when when you hire a place on rent you pay the rental Yes. Suppose you are living in a rented premise, you will pay rental to the owner every month. Yeah. So similarly, the the producer or the distributor 
has to pay rental to the cinema so ballpark what we consider is the entire net box office collection suppose it is 250 Yeah. only 50% actually less than 50% comes into the producer's pocket so if a film has cost 200 crore and it has done a box office of 250 crore it doesn't mean there's a profit of 50 crore out of this 250 crore 125 crore is taken away by the various cinemas which have screened the film okay what remains is only 125 so as against the cost of 200 crore only 125 crore has come into the producer's pocket besides this there is revenue from overseas like we just yes. spoke there is revenue from audio rights there is revenue from satellite rights and yes. digital rights so satellite right uh, colors yeah. may pay or a star tv or a z tv and digital of course and amazon or a netflix so we total all these and then arrive at the at the final figure of revenue and compare that with the cost so probably 125 crore from india maybe 20 crore from overseas so 145 maybe 10 crore from music so 155 and if it gets the balance 45 crore from digital and satellite it's a break even film if it gets more than 45 crore it's a plus film if it gets less than 45 crore from digital and satellite it's a minus film it's a loser okay so that does not it so it necessarily doesn't mean that like if my film has cost 300 crores to make and i make 310 crores i may end up losing 30 crores also you will you will if it yes. makes if it has cost 300 yes. crore and in all probability unless yes. your digital and satellite rights have fetched a fancy amount i'll yeah. give you the example i'll give you the example of adi purush that's a yes, yes. film yeah. it has cost uh, 500 crore to me yeah. of which 150 crore was prabhas's remuneration Yeah. Now, instead of the remuneration, Prabhas was given the rights, theatrical rights of the Telugu version. So, five hundred crore में से डेढ़ सौ करोड़ उनको पेमेंट नहीं हुआ. डेढ़ सौ करोड़ के बजाय उनको Telugu rights दे दिए. ठीक है. So the cost to T series is three hundred and fifty crore. Okay. In this three hundred and fifty crore has to be recovered from the India theatrical revenue of the Hindi version. Yes. Telugu, uh, sorry, uh, Tamil dubbed, Kannada dubbed, Malayalam dubbed. Tamil dubbed, Kannada dubbed, Malayalam dubbed. The film has flopped. So let's consider almost a zero. Of course, it will okay. collect some, yes. a couple of crores. Let's just consider that it's a zero. Okay, for simplicity's sake. Yeah. So now it has to collect 150 crore from the Hindi theatrical rights from the oh this uh, um, overseas. 350 crore 350 crore overseas and audio rights and yes. uh, this theatrical i mean sorry ott and satellite, satellite rights. yeah now ott and satellite rights of all the versions they have got approximately 225 crore okay, okay. so 3 350 crore me se sawa 200 crore gaya bacha 125 crore yes okay 125 crore me se approximately 35 or 40 crore it will make from overseas let's say 30 40 crore so 125 minus 40 85 crore remains yes okay 85 crore for doing for getting a share of 85 crore from india theatrical yeah it has to do a net box office collection of about 185 to 190 crore wow. okay now now yeah. 185 to 90 crore also it may do but when i calculated the cost 350 crore i said 500 crore of which 150 crore was prabhas's remuneration so 350 crore what i did not consider in this is the interest factor it has taken 2 2 and a half years to make yeah. and the interest is due so the interest would have been at least about 25 30 crore and the cost of promotion another 15 to 20 crore so about 40 crore i am not considered in the cost so it's actually 350 crore plus 40 crore now even if it does 185 crore or 9 190 crore all india it will break even but the interest factor and the um uh, promotion that 40 crore is not going to come in so in all probability the producer will lose probably 25 30 35 40 crore as for prabhas yeah. he has sold the rights of the distribution of the telugu version for say an x amount 150 crore or 160 crore probably he sold it for 150 crore so he has got his fee by getting that uh, yeah, yeah, telugu yeah. rights but selling the telugu rights to some distributor now that distributor in all probability will not break yes, even so yes. ultimately the telugu version is a loss making film and the hindi one might make a loss so therefore we call it 
not a successful film we call it a below average film below average wow this is very technical you know like i the way you broke very down technical. everything it's it's very really mathematical and coding kind of a thing it's 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 actually good to know that in the film industry also these kinds of so hardcore technical jobs exist because these are not publicized as much uh, that's how that's how my degree of uh, chartered accountancy comes into play i am a chartered yes. accountant by yes. qualification so it helps me you know uh, sometimes people ask me why did you do ca when you wanted to come into this business yeah. but i think education never goes waste yeah. you know it doesn't really and see today it's helping me i review films analyze films which is the artistic side but because i do it from the public point of view yeah. there is a commerce and i can understand the commerce uh, better yeah. than many others because probably of my ca background so yes and in in and in future we can definitely see a lot of data scientists also going into that field because definitely. because also there have been there have been companies like ormax which uh, does box office predictions and uh, the stuff sorry <laughs> so because like that's a thing like that's the, like yeah, a thing yeah so but yeah again yeah, we don't know what's exactly happening but this has been in the market kind of a thing which also kinds of uh, brings me to totally from the box office perspective you know after the pandemic uh, hindi films to be very specific even other indian films also except two three uh, tamil or telugu films they are not working in the theaters so why do you think this change is happening in the current india or what change is indian cinema going through and where do you see the future headed to see this was bound to happen it got accelerated because of the lockdown during the pandemic lockdown covid pandemic lockdown people got used to watching or consuming content on ott platforms so it accelerated the process probably this would have happened 5 or 7 years later it happened it is happening now because people are enjoying content on ott it's not appointment viewing they can see it on their free, at their free time it is as good sometimes better than films yeah the only thing that they miss is the group viewing yeah. cinema is a group viewing exercise you cry and laugh and clap with people whom you have never met and whom you may probably never again meet yes. but that group exercise is what differentiates cinema why box office and why films are being affected why the film industry or cinema industry in particular is being adversely affected is because the discussions in households today has shifted from films to ott content people are talking about web series rather than about films and they talk about films when they come on ott 8 or 10 weeks later exactly. so you know so cinema business is quite adversely affected yeah so where do you think the future is headed because during the because when satellite came in india because there was initially also hype that this will kill the cinema that's the period of 80s to 90s and then came in shahrukh khan so then again that's a different thing but uh, do you think that in future again somebody like shahrukh khan is coming which can again change the whole theatrical kind of a thing uh, business or do you think that right now we are suffering from the 80s to 90s period of indian cinema in 2020s see even if a superstar were to come in those days film stars acted only in films they never did television today every film star in some way or the other is connected with the ott platforms so even if five new superstars were to come on the horizon what prevents them from going to ott and doing stuff there also so definitely the threat to cinema industry is more than it ever has been okay definitely the cinema industry is on a shaky wicket which is why a lot of heroes are not starting films they are sitting at home wondering what works and what doesn't work writers don't know what to write directors don't know what to make but i also feel that uh, cinema industry cannot die so soon it's not as if uh, cinemas ko taale lag jayenge yeah. it will come around what needs to be done is they need to work harder on their content earlier before ott was a formidable opposition even average stuff passed off as above average and reasonably good stuff passed off as hit cinema yeah. today the audience has become so discerning because world content is available to them so their their uh, way of uh, appreciating content has undergone a sea change therefore filmmakers will have to pull up their socks make better content and make content which can be enjoyed in cinemas which is not to say that it has to be only spectacular the kerala story is hardly spectacular it's yeah. a small budget film but a 5 or 7 crore film has 
yeah. netted at the box office some 240 crore yeah. now exactly. what do you say it's not a spectacular film it's yes. not as if it's a marvel film so it's great content which will work and you have to engage the viewers you have to make them feel as though they collectively in the cinema are participating those films will definitely run it's a transitional phase but i'm sure uh, cinema will turn around and will start doing better yeah so you know that also kinds of brings me because you know earlier when uh, like specifically talking about one filmmaker who has who has like who had, uh, who had been you know making films for the internet and uh, you know for, for not for internet but more like you know personal viewing devices anurag kashyap so all of his films before coming to theaters people used to download in torrents and like all of his films like parts it never got released but people had seen it so those kinds of films didn't did found an audience thanks to ott and by the time until in 2000 till 2019 i think the before war release so there were films like badhai ho and everything which were very short uh, which were you know heavy content like high concept <coughs> film as karan johar calls it and they were collecting a lot of uh, a lot of box office collection but after the pandemic uh, what happens is only films which are spectacles like let's say pathan let's say rrr is or let's say kantara kantara is a low budget film but it's kind of a very it's, it's a great theatrical experience it makes you feel like that and again there's a film like an action hero staring ayushman khurana which is content driven which is very heavy on content there are many anurag kashyap films which are again not working on the theaters so again w- w- why this shift is happening according no. to you? spectacular i just answered the question yes. before you asked it that yeah. it's not just spectacular the kerala story is anything yeah, yeah, but yeah. spectacular yeah. it has worked bhul bhulaiya 2 yeah bhul bhulaiya well not spectacular but it worked big time you know so yeah. i think what works at the box office will always be a mystery yeah. uh it's not so easy to predict uh, it depends on many factors many factors but good content which reaches here the heart that will never go wrong that will never go out of fashion uh, definitely filmmakers need to reinvent themselves what is happening is uh, the audience is being served the same dish again and again and again and with so much alternate content available on, on ott they are not going to accept the similar style of content so you either think of new stories or make it absolutely spectacular or change the presentation something has to be novel something has to be new okay and uh, you know totally talking in terms of uh, box office uh, perspective according to you if someone was to ask you like let's say you are in a meeting with a producer and someone is just asking you that what is currently working in the you know what if a uh, what is working in the films right now and you just have let's say you uh, top 3 factors you have to mention then what it would be for a uh, for a film to work in the box office given in this context only one thing i don't even need three things entertainment entertainment content content that reaches your heart it doesn't have to reach your mind it has to reach your heart if it strikes a chord in your heart you are done that film cannot go wrong now entertainment could be laughter as in bulbulaiya 2 yeah. it could be thought provoking and shock as in the kerala story it could be grandeur and action as in pathan yeah so it could be i mean entertainment has a wide connotations and it has to entertain the audience the audience has to feel entertained for those two and a half years it could be an emotional drama you feel entertained when you have cried in a film now yeah. some people say are mai paise kharch karke roon kyu yeah, exactly. but that is but that is therapeutic you know yes. it is therapeutic people enjoy crying in the cinema halls and that is why those films which make the audience cry also work at the box office so yes. it's it's just entertainment wow that's a, that's a really good insight uh, that what matters at the end of the day is that it should strike a connection with the audience like we should be it, it, it should, the actors should be communicating from the screen which uh, which actually is the good old magic you know silver screen magic and uh, before i move to my last question i just have one more which is uh, there was this uh, national cinema day where you know the ticket prices were reduced to 75 rupees and on that on at that time there was one film released called chop so it max that the first day collection of that box i was closely tracking the film and the first day collection was extremely well so do you also think that ticket prices and those uh, theater prices and popcorn prices have an effect uh, on the total box office collection of the film definitely in fact i have been writing articles and articles of uh, the incorrect pricing ticket prices are too high concessioners popcorns and nachos and uh, samosas and uh, water bottles are so expensive uh, you know what happens suppose you are sweating you have yeah. walked in the sun 
you're sweating, you're not very, I mean, dusty also, the dust has settled on your clothes. You go to uh, Mr. Mukesh Ambani's yeah. residence, you see spotless white sofas. Yeah. And the servant gets you to the hall and he says, Beto. Out of embarrassment, realizing that your clothes are full of dust and you're sweating, you'll say, no, no, I'm okay. I'll keep standing because you don't want to insult yourself by sitting on the sofa and then leaving those stains or leaving the dust there because you are scared what will they speak behind your back after you have left. Even the servants might say, ye kitna ganda admi tha. Sofa ganda karke chala gaya. Same way, when you keep the pricing so high, the middle class and lower middle class people don't feel inclined to go to the cinemas because they don't want to feel insulted in front of their children. The yeah. richer class, the richer section is buying popcorns, is having such a fun time. They may probably, the poorer people or the middle class people may probably be able to afford the tickets. But what about the interval? They don't want their children to feel slighted because they can't afford the popcorn and the samosas and the nachos. So what do they do? Let's not go to the cinema. Who is losing? The film industry is losing. I'm surprised people who own chains, multiplex chains, you know, the national multiplex chains like PBR, Cinepolis, uh, Carnival, Movie Time, Inox. I'm appalled that they are not thinking on the lines of getting the ticket rates and the rates of eatables and cold drinks and water down because then they will be seeing what the business of volumes can do. They seem to be concentrating only on getting the maximum in the minimum number of days. For the long run of films, they need to... I'm saying keep the high ticket rates for the first weekend. Yes. The weekdays bring it down, which is okay. Second and third and fourth week, bring it down further. Also, differential pricing. I'm not going to pay... I'm not going to be so generous to pay the same ticket price for a Shah Rukh Khan film yeah. and for a non-star cast film unless that non-star cast film is as good as say the, Kash the Kashmir Files or the Kerala story. But not all films are as good. So then what happens? Those films suffer. People say, nahi yaar, hazar rupay mein, it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. want to see because stars at least assure them that if the film is not good, at least stars' ka chehra and their stardom they can enjoy. So, I think differential pricing also has to come in. Okay. That, that was a lot of insights in the past uh, 40 minutes. So, uh, now I'm opening up to the audience. Uh, so, guys, do you, if you have any questions, you may just raise your hand and uh, you can then just go ahead. Uh, if you, do you guys have any questions? You can just raise your hand um, and you can join in. Or if, or if you are uncomfortable in uh, unmuting yourself, you can just type it out and I may read it for sir. Uh, don't think in, Yeah, sure. Yeah, she's go ahead. Uh, sir, do you really think that in the future, after the Netflix and other OTT platforms, the cinema will uh, shut down? Because I've seen many cinemas in my cities shutting down and they are become like, a, you know, any old, uh, you know, gra uh, grass or something, uh, um, like trees or something like... Uh, it's fallen down. So, do you uh, think that, that happened in the future? Shrijal, I don't think cinemas, all the cinemas will close down. Uh, there's there's an optimum level. Uh, some cinemas will close down if they don't upgrade themselves, if they don't uh, uh, switch on the air conditioners, if they don't give comfort uh, and luxury to the audience. There is a fear that they will close down. But ultimately, it is not as if all the cinemas will close down. Cinema will continue to work. Cinemas will continue to work in, this, uh, in India at least. Because as I said, that group viewing, that exercise of group viewing, you cannot replicate at home. You may have the biggest screen at home. You may call friends and family. But there's a difference between 10 people or 12 people watching a film and 200 and 300 people watching. That combined laughter, that joint uh, size, those tears dropping where you can hear people sniffing. That is a different joy altogether. Yes. True. That is, that is really true. Thank you, sir. Yeah. It, it, that kind of brings me, you know, and, and when Pathan released, my, my God, the joy. Like, yes. The way <laughs> they were shouting when he said Zinda hai. You couldn't have oh, enjoyed in the... Exactly, yeah. Of your home. It, it's not same at Prime Video. It's totally different. It feels very odd without the shouting and everything. Yes, Aditya, go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, Adil. Sir, my question is, 
So my question is, as you know, uh, in I, I will take the example of uh, Adipur that it was trolled for you know uh, for its VFX and misinterpreting the biological uh, uh, characters. So are the producers not aware that my VFX is not so good? People will not uh, you know connect with it, or they are you know just trying to make a habitual to Indians about VFX. Hello, where is the lag behind it? See, when you're making a film, you tend to get biased. Everything appears to be fine. That is where objectivity matters. You become so subjective that you don't realize that you're making a mistake. I think in their quest to give a sto- give the story of Rama in, in a very modern way with lot of technology, computer graphics and visual effects, they actually forgot that script is what finally makes the film run. The script is the film's backbone. They never worked hard. At least it seems to me that they did a very rushed job of the script because they were so enamored of the visual effects and computer graphics. They were so excited that they did not even pay attention to the script because otherwise you can't have Hanuman telling uh, Ravan's assistant, Tere ko dho dalunga. Dho dalunga is a coinage and it's slang. I mean, in the mm-hmm. Ramayana era, nobody used slang. Oh, tera baap, tera baap, tera baap. Ya, yeah. teri lanka laga dunga. Now, these are absolutely unpardonable mistakes, especially because you're talking about the Ramayana. So, even otherwise, these are dialogues, but even the screenplay was so bad. You know, Ram's face has divinity written all over it. Prabhas's face didn't look very divine. Where was that uh, tej, you know, that, that shine on Ram's face? That was missing. Prabhas, his acting itself was so bad. I mean, he, he seemed to be disinterested to me. So you can't make a film with half-baked scenes and with wrong dialogues. I think they concentrated too heavily. But this is an error of judgment which can happen to anybody. Nobody does this on purpose because after all, so much money is at stake. So uh, it's a mistake which some people might feel is unpardonable. But finally, they are suffering. The ones who made the mistake will have to pay in terms of losses. So in the upcoming times, we will see a change in VFX or we will see no VFX in the films? No, no, no. It, it never reverses. No VFX to Savali nahi. There will be VFX. Brahmastra for that matter had lovely VFX. Even in Adi Purush, some visual effects were very good, but some were not at all up to the mark. So I think, uh, I mean, people will have to take more care. And there's no question that there will be no VFX. Films that require VFX, there will be. There are films which don't require VFX at all. So then you don't need to push them or shove them in just for the sake of having VFX. Thank you, sir. Uh, those are great questions, Aditya. Yes, Ashish, you can go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, I was wondering how the impact of foreign movies, the Hollywood movies, which is being released in India, is affecting the Indian industry, like movies and the Harry Potter series and this series, that series, which keep on coming in India. How is it actually impacting the Indian audience as well as the producers uh, who are making film and getting impacted by these sort of films, which is very high quality? See, even now, if you consider the annual box office, the contribution of Hollywood films is probably 5 to 7% only in the total pie. So the total Hindi box office, 5 to 7% comes from Hollywood films. The balance is still from Bollywood films. Uh, and frankly, those Hollywood films are contributing to the Bollywood exchequer. So there's nothing to fret of you. Yes, their, their quality sometimes is better. The visual effects, etc. are better. But as I said, it's 5 to 7% only. So they have still a very far way to go uh, to really compete or take Bollywood head on. We are an emotional people. We like to see our stories. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you for your question. And I don't think anybody else has any I think I think Shivam has. Yeah, Shivam. uh, Shivam, do you have something to ask? No, sir. Okay. 
Oh, he's just uh, turning on his camera. So, uh, and just uh, before you uh, uh, leave, uh, uh, before we end today's uh, session, what uh, message would you like, kind of like to give to our you know data scientist community at IITM, those who are interested in getting into this uh, business particularly, because this is again a very you know number oriented job and uh, many technical skills are required. So, how do they kind of should get in and what should contact they do? contact me? I'm a sucker for uh, figures and I'm a sucker for films. So wow. please contact me. I'm sure we can do uh, a lot of things because genuinely I'm very fond of number crunching and films are my uh, lifeblood. So it would be nice if you have some good ideas. Let's do something together. There is a lot of scope. Don't uh, think that this industry doesn't need you. Of course it needs you. And uh, as I said, there's a lot that can be done with number crunching. Yes, the, the, those were very, you know, those are great to hear and I'm sure all of us got motivated. So, thank you so much, sir, for joining today. It was a great session and it's an honor thank again you. for us to all to have you over here. So, thank, thank you so you. much and I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you.